Uh, yeah, but it's still. I mean, the point. Are you still right to be disappointed after yesterday? I think. No, yeah, and in the in, in not just in the context of that, but in the context of you know Ireland going to the World Cup is it's kind of was an impossible dream. A once and, in a lifetime thing. Y- yeah. Look, hopefully it, it's not now. Uh, potentially it is. Um, but it's. And I know you feel a little. It might seem a little bit churlish after fifty years of you had not you know not being able to dream even of playing in a World Cup to then be disappointed that it's over in six days but it is okay to be disappointed because Ireland got a tough tr- tough, really tough group they could have they played reasonably well they could have done some things better they did some things well um, but it's still okay to be disappointed that that wasn't enough and not in a kind of a Roy Keane uh, ah you know if, you, if you're happy with a sing song to go home etc you'll never achieve anything yeah, I don't really mean it in that sense really it's just, it's just kind of disappointing yeah it feels like we we prepared as well as we possibly could in most aspects um, <clears throat> I think maybe we were a bit unlucky with the Denise Sullivan injury she hasn't played to her potential and we needed everybody to like smash it in terms of their own performances um, if we were going to get out of the group and yet we still got pretty close to getting a point on the first day against the host nation yeah. who are a top 10 team in the world and we came pretty close to getting a point yesterday yeah uh, we got horsed with the draw I mean, we got two of the world's top ten. I think that's the only group in which that's been the case. And you're looking at Group A with New Zealand, who are relatively weak co-hosts, Philippines, Norway, who are this kind of amazing circus, but not a proper football team at this tournament. You think we, we did get really unlucky with the draw? It's a hell of a start to the game yesterday. And like with the, the Heather Payne late withdrawal too, that would not have helped matters at all. But Anya O'Gorman did very well at the start and it was her ball down the right flank after three minutes for Lucy Quinn. And you're saying you're shouting to Quinn on TV like first time swinging in and it was just a low cross into Carusa who had a brilliant first half. Like Buchanan was, I'd say, delighted to be with at the break because <laughs> she would not leave them alone. Like it was everything that wasn't happening against Australia. She was trying to do exactly what she actually achieved against Canada, which is harrying the defenders and pressing them. And like, let's be clear, that's a star-studded Canadian defence that they have certainly in the clubs they represent and you have Carusa who um, did an incredible job up front on her own and they couldn't handle her and as a result Ireland got a good few chances and then to score directly from the corner but how mad is it that for the last week people have been talking genuinely about McCabe being close to scoring directly from corners Well, like twice against Australia it looked very close to it like in fairness you see something happen a good few times like oh one of these is going to go in I know but to keep on going and going and trying it again and like I don't know if McCabe all three times that she well, the two times she nearly scored and the one time she did is directly going for goal I'm sure she's just whipping it in to the six yard box and causing havoc but like as soon as that left her foot I was thinking this is a great chance but she knew it like she was away she yeah, was away. She, took, she, was, she took like one step to check the angle you know like a golfer stepping out of a bunker to get a side of the ball dropping onto the green and then she was just like ah oh, that's in I can, I, can keep, I can keep going here I think she I think she completely meant it definitely uh, and it's also I didn't realise it was these goals are called an Olympic I saw I saw Kathleen telling Joe that, and Joe didn't know, and I didn't know. No, I she said it confidently. I must challenge her on that now. She <laughs> definitely knew that confidently. Uh, uh, yeah, and, it co- and it comes from a hundred years ago, ninety nine years ago. Uh, some Argentinian guy whose name I cannot remember scored directly from a corner against Uruguay, uh-huh. uh, and it's called an Olympico because they were the Olympic champions at the time. Yeah, which is obviously Canada's status in the women's game at the moment. So there's, it's a pure Olympico in a way, like a pure hat trick is right foot, left foot header. Yeah, this is this is pure Olympico. So Katie McCabe will always will always have that. It's uh, it was Ireland's Ronaldinho moment, the World Cup, straight in, and there will always be the question: Did she mean that? Would be the next question, you know? When she's interviewed in a couple of months' time, did you actually mean that, Katie? When the dust is set? Oh, obviously you say yes. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> did Ronaldinho say yes? I, mean, I still don't. Kevin McManaman says Ronaldinho. yes. That's what's important. Oh yeah, um, totally. And then McCabe had her, you know, Zario Anzari. Yeah. Speaking of um, Ireland captain performances, like it, it was reminiscent of Roy Keane against the Netherlands in 2001, that second half, oh, yeah. where she picks the ball up on the right flank and cuts inside two Can- I think it was four Canadian defenders she went around. And afterwards, was it Tony O'Donoghue who asked her in RT, was like, were you tempted to go down for a penalty? And she's like, ah, no. This is who wanted to score an amazing goal. And she was she so did, close. Uh, she did say that, had there been contact, had there been contact, they would have gone down, gone Tony, but there was none. And... Uh, even when it took that little deflection I thought it was going to sneak in bottom corner and there was a moment afterwards too where she lost the bottom of the field but won it back and it was pure hustle and then she shot from distance and it went over but you could see she was trying to grab the game as much as she possibly could like Keane against the Dutch like it was an incredible performance and not one that personally deserved to be on the losing side but Ireland did not warrant getting anything from that game Canada were so much better in the second half yeah 
Sorry, I thought you were going to butt in. Sorry. I think one all at half time is an injustice. And then yeah. had it been 4 yes. 1 Canada yeah. full time, I'm thinking, ah, you can't really argue with that. Thought they I... did create a lot of very clear cut chances. And we didn't really. I mean, just the, even in the first half when we played well, scored the magnificent Olympico goal. Kier Cruz had a one on one that was blocked. Yeah, tough angle. Were there any. Sinead other? Farrelly had the outside of the right yeah. alley, which um, Sheridan put behind for a corner. And was it Denise O'Sullivan had a poor enough shot from distance by her standards yeah. technique wise there weren't a whole but lot of I thought Canada were so poor in the first half especially their final third passing with respect though right we always get hammered in international football and it always finishes 1-1 or 2 all. <laughs> that's what happens we we draw games that we're supposed to lose against teams who are better than us like no one ever with the exception of 2012 hammers us in these games right uh, yeah and, uh, under the relatively small sample size that is out of the World Cup you can't argue with that no and, and most of the other tournaments uh, sorry the Belgians hammered us as well Denmark um, well sorry Denmark's playoff yeah um, oh no that doesn't count <laughs> <laughs> that's not real uh, so Vera Pau it seems in the papers it's like there's just this acceptance from the people who are out there that there won't be a new contract that this is the end of the Vera Pau era now in the game against Nigeria is that the right thing to do yeah I mean it's f- in one sense it's very strange like you know this is Virpa has clearly done a very good job as Ireland manager in the sense that she's got us to a bloody World Cup for the first time ever so it seems kind of harsh to say then you know very much. farewell <laughs> we're going to move on without you um, but you would have to say that the FAI haven't the FAI haven't given her a contract yet which is certainly. unusual from <laughs> well this is what we usually do we usually I mean <laughs> managers and their agents yeah. usually tie this down yeah. way ahead of time uh, and a bonus <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mick, Mick obviously got his secured before the World Cup and then had to be torn up within two games after it uh, the RFU have been doing this for years uh, Eddie I think Eddie O'Sullivan and Declan Kidney I'm, do, I'm just going off memory there uh. um, but yeah so uh you, know, you, you were using the word before, and the, the FBI's newfound maturity and letting this uh, letting this play out and see how it goes. But um, I kind of think she should stay, and she had yeah. done such a good job. I can't help but uh, speaking of ropey comparisons, it's like uh, Vera Powell and Joe Schmidt have a similar impact. I mean, obviously Schmidt uh, achieves so much, like in the grand stage, but it's the way that Powell has turned us into this incredible kind of systemic team, almost like that. We have we're a very tough unit to break down, and I know we've lost those two games, but it is like against Australia and Canada. Like they're way better sides. Look at them on paper. Look at the players that Canada brought on a half time alone versus what we were able to bring on. So in many ways, she as a unit, we're performing above what we should, but it's the individuals that we lack. And the Schmidt comparison I mean is that, you know, he was so tailored to a system that there was very little room for individual creativity. And maybe that's the negative point of Europe House approach to things and you feel that there is maybe a lack of uh, innovation and space to kind of create but at the same time perhaps we just don't have the talent especially in the final third to be able to do that yeah. but I think we should be very like happy with what Powell's done for the site Kenny the dad says Vera Trapatoni <laughs> yeah that's the one I hear more I just need to be more positive I don't think she I don't think she looks down the players like the way Trapatoni did no I I don't think she does. Um, no, she diagnoses them more accurately more and is less, uh, than, uh, you know. I, my back five is slow. I mean, yeah, the, uh, like that, that's, that's one yeah. number more than Trap would have said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the back five is slow, but they are quality at the same time as what she's saying. I do. I think that she believes in the players. I think there's a different honesty. I do. I do think that she believes players. in the players more, and it seems like she's actually believed in the players more. She spent more time with them. That uh, the performances were a bit more front foot than I had expected. Definitely yesterday. Yeah. 100%, yeah. And so that's a sign that you trust your players a bit, unless the players are just like doing it. But they were Paris. coming from a low base. Like, I mean, they barely crossed the halfway line until they went behind against Australia. Yeah, I know, but they nearly nicked the draw at the end against Australia. Yeah. I mean, like, they didn't have a corner till the 70th minute and then they had half a dozen. So they did get there eventually. I mean, that's classic Ireland at a World Cup performance. I know. Backs against the wall against superior opposition. And then when you create chances, like, it really fits in nicely to going back to like that reading in the years moment like if that Queen glancing header had gone in against Australia that's a classic Ireland one all yeah. and that first half display yesterday if there was one or more, two more chances and obviously a goal or two uh, scored then you're talking like what a tournament Ireland have had it's kind of fine margins the only disappointment was how quickly Ireland faded in the second half and how Canada were I think Joe said to Kathleen on the World Cup show yesterday it kind of reminded him of the Limerick hurlers at the moment is that like alright lads we weren't great there in the first half 
let's actually start playing the second half and that's yeah. kind of what happened uh, who is going to be the new manager I like I, I don't know the, the interesting thing about Pau is that I thought that there might be a bit of a slightly more fraught debate as to whether we should or shouldn't extend the contract but like you said there just seems to be a general air around all the reporting around it is that it's this is probably done now. Like, yeah. Maybe you move on. And look, maybe, in fairness, maybe it's, it's more opinion than reporting because no, yeah. no one's actually said that they've spoken to anybody off the record or on the record or it's just a, like her her contract looks like it won't be renewed. Yeah. Although she wanted it to be. Yeah. The opinion is kind of often informed by a bit of, bit of knowledge of what's okay. going on in the background. Okay. Um, like, it's it's a more attractive job now? Massively attractive. I'm it's a massively attractive job. Yeah. Like, uh, this is now like, if you take the Ireland job, you're walking into a team that has legitimately world class players in Katie McCabe and in Denise O'Sullivan the, the sad thing is that we haven't really seen that from Denise O'Sullivan at the World Cup you still get the sense that you're on an upward trajectory I you mean that your first game could potentially be sorry it feels kind of harsh the power's still on the job but if there is a new manager uh, their first game would be at the Aviva um, which you would hope would get a you know well, they obviously will aim to set it out, but hopefully get like 35,000 plus for that. Mm. Um, and you've got a team that kind of has a real good shot now, draw depending on making the Euros luck. Sorry, is this not really premature to talk about the end of Europe? How? No? I mean... Well, I sorry, my personal opinion is yes, but there's a general vibe out there. But even the, the talking vibes, about... The vibes indicate that the Nigeria game could be your last game. Yeah, but like, who's going to be the manager for the Aviva friendlies? Geez, like Mick McCarthy got two games after the 2002 World Cup. Now they got to the last 16. Yeah, but and like, it leads me to think: yeah. are, are we going to get anyone in circumstances? It didn't work very well. Uh, well that's what uh, I, the uh, entire next campaign was a write-off after that. That's what I mean. But uh, like, I don't think there's a write-off uh, question about Pau. She's clearly going to continue to have this really good system in place. I don't think we're going to fall off a cliff. We don't really do that under Pau. Last couple of years. I, I just think it's a bit premature. Also, like I'm also thinking, there's going to be a homecoming here. Like, are people going to come to see these players when they come? There home? is going to be a homecoming. Yeah, uh, Dublin City Council are putting that on. Um, I, good question here from Mark Dunning. Given we can't qualify now, should wholesale changes be made for the last game to give everybody the opportunity to play in a World Cup, or do we go all out to win the game and play our best eleven? Uh, the f- the former. I think you. Can, I think you have give to give everybody a game. Oh yeah, I think so. I mean, like the one of the issues around this. Well, from it's only my personal opinion, it's just like uh, the very clear segregation between first team and second team. Yeah. To the point that the first team flew out to Australia a day in advance uh, because that was the only way that everyone could get on business class. So the top players went so they'd have an extra day to to acclimatize. I think, given it's so historic. The Ireland going to first World Cup that it's such a big thing to be involved in um, I think you I think you give players their shot at playing in a World Cup rather than just going along and if we get hammered five or six down sure we we don't get hammered matter. in World Cups like, I know but I refer to your I know we know we don't put our previous comments B team either though uh, I think I think you I think you rotate a bit yeah and I think I think it'd be brutally harsh on some of the players who've come through what they have thinking particularly of Chloe Mustaki and then just to go and sit on the bench for three games don't think that's fair. So make five or six changes. Yeah. Keep keep Katie. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not going. We're not going that mad. Uh, no, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Courtney Brosnan. Uh, yeah, I, I know. Yeah, keep Courtney Brosnan. Keep Katie McCabe in the team. Um, but ro- yeah, rotate beyond that. Do you think the result against Nigeria is going to determine Powell's future? I think I think the point I think the vibe the vibe across the papers and across all the uh, opinion formers uh, is that it's kind of done or it seems to be done sorry I'm I'm probably getting ahead of myself a little bit there but I don't know if I'm going to get pumped 4-0 which won't happen maybe that changes things but and look I mean things could change very quickly afterwards on the way home they might decide actually this has been a great experience there's something building here they take soundings from the players who afterwards go you know what uh, this relationship is hard but uh, good for us uh, mutually beneficial yeah and we should stick with it and there is a risk I mean if the FAI do want to change up there is a risk because like you say I mean Pau does guarantee Ireland a certain base level of performance and thus achievement and it just comes down to do we need it becomes a conversation like we've had with the men's team for a long time yeah. do we need to add something more to this that gives us more in an attacking sense there's a, there's a ceiling there for sure and I, I don't get a sense of huge warmth from the squad towards her but mm-hmm. maybe that's just their style and look that is effective to a certain degree but yeah like, there's a ceiling that's going to be hit but I don't think we're there yet alright Kathleen McNamee is with us Kathleen good morning to you how are you 
Morning, guys. I've been enjoying this conversation the last few minutes. I have many thoughts. Well, <laughs> spill the beans. Uh, I agree with Gavin. I don't think beer is going to last past the World Cup. Um, the vibe on the ground is very much that she's run the course with this team. I think there's a few players in there who wouldn't be too sad to see the back of her either. I think it's like, yeah, she got us here and she's done that, but... Uh, I think especially with all the controversy that there's been as well over the last like couple of months, I think the team need a clean slate. It's been such a bumpy ride into this World Cup and I think the players are kind of tired as well of ask, answering questions on behalf of like the management team and having to go through those things. Um, I think the substitutions that she made last night and the way she put out the team shows that maybe she has reached a bit of a sailing with the side. Um, and I also think we have to go out and win that Nigeria game 100% that should be the aim like no we shouldn't just be putting players onto the pitch when getting that win is so important for this team I think uh, maybe substitutions later on in the game but I wouldn't be going making any wholesale changes uh, okay there's a lot in that um, is there an obvious <laughs> candidate list is there, are, are people talking about a replacement already yeah, well, the word, like, the talk on the ground out here very much has been, like, what's going to happen. Because I think even before the team went out to Australia, there was a feeling that unless something really remarkable happens during this World Cup, it possibly would be Vera's last campaign with the team. Her herself has said that, you know, she wants to stay on. But the way things have ground to a bit of a halt before they even went out to the tournament in terms of talks and... I honestly just like looking at Vera the last couple of weeks. I think she herself is exhausted from everything over the last couple of months. You know, she hasn't had that wannabe that she's had around her for a long time. And I feel like some some of the players, when you ask her about her now, the responses are getting a lot less emphatic and a lot more surface level and the you know, there's no one on the team running out to say we absolutely want Vera to continue on past this World Cup and I think that's quite telling. Yeah, there's there's definitely been an absence of the uh, ringing endorsements at various stages and there's been plenty of opportunity for it to happen. Well, famously, well, I say famously, but most notably, Katie McCabe sitting beside her at Tala um, before the France friendly. Um, after all those, um, after the Athletic article kind of reheated all those allegations from from the Houston Dash time that were put in that NWSL report last December. Um, I, I think there's definitely respect there, but there's there wasn't a full throated. And we're a hundred percent by Vera here. Why are you fake news media talking about this rubbish to distract us ahead of the World Cup, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, you know, even even the post match interview yesterday, McCabe with uh, Tony Donahue was you know effusive in her praise about her teammates and how great they were. And Kathleen, I think you talked about it in the World Cup show that you know her individual performance in the second half is extraordinary, but only helped by her teammates, so it's, which is what she said. But at the same time, she eventually yeah. got to the point that like, well, also big credit to the staff because it's a collective effort, but there's no mention of the manager there really explicitly. Do you get the feeling, Kathleen, that uh, Pow is kind of hurt or? disappointment by the squad's approach and feeling towards her or is she the type of character that really won't care about that and it's her way or the highway uh, I I definitely think she's a it's her way or the highway type of manager I think that if you look at the way the squad like exactly what you were saying there the way the squad had talked about her previously compared to how they talk about her now like I don't think I interviewed a single person or heard a single person last night pull Vera out for you know what she had given the team or how she had set up the team it was all the team talking about themselves or talking about other players I think like if it uh, if the whole thing ended badly with her I do think there would be some hurt there but I think if it's a case of everyone saying okay we've just come to the end of this journey where do we go from here and like, you guys are right there is the massive question around well then who takes over but I do think this team needs something fresh going into that Nations League possible Euros qualification campaign. Well, I think there's just been too much that's gone on and there's too much baggage over the last couple of months for Vera to stay on. And I get the sense there would be a bit of disappointment if she did stick around for a long time. Like maybe they will give her the Northern Ireland game in terms of just having like that big kind of homecoming game and, you know, one big hurrah. But I, I would be surprised if she stayed from what I have heard on the ground here. 
Okay. Um, now that the dust has settled a little bit on the performance yesterday, is there anything that we could have done differently in that second half, do you think? Uh, not made a substitution at halftime. I didn't understand that. I thought Lucy Quinn was doing a really, really good job. I think that, for me, a lot of the substitutions didn't make a whole lot of sense. It felt like Vera had read some of the criticism like, in the lead-up to this game about not using certain players and then threw a lot of them on. I know we did like tactically change things up a little bit, but it just felt like we had found a system in that first half and we should have stuck with that for like a little bit longer before throwing the book at things. Um, in fairness to Canada, I think their substitutes came on and did incredibly well and really dictated the game. But like Emma Byrne was pointing out on Koi Gig last night that that central midfield area was so important for them. And whenever they took out, whenever they brought in Christine Sinclair and we took out Lucy, it left us like a little bit lax there and that we didn't have the, we weren't able to like, let say the likes of Farley and O'Sullivan run right the way that they had been in the first half. So um, I think there's definitely questions to be asked about the personnel changes and why they came when they did. And I mean, like the last 20 minutes in particular were just kind of a one woman eighty show. Uh, I think she was trying to single-handedly drag us into the Nigeria game with something still to play for. Uh, and we just don't have the depth. We don't have the depth mm. that Canada have. You look at the players that they brought off the bench, you know, none of them are the sort of players that you would turn your nose up at. We, I thought Kira Caruso was so good in the first half and really, really showed what she was capable of and played the role that we wanted to see from her in this World Cup. But she just doesn't have the speech of someone like McCabe. Like there was one moment uh, in the second half when McCabe and Quinn were battling in midfield and somehow McCabe got the ball away and like a beautiful turn. And that's when she got the shot off that looked like it was going to be a McCabe screener. If you had a player up front who could do something like that, who could get themselves away from those tricky situations, I think that it would make a big difference for us in terms of where we get our goals. So I think it was a depth issue mainly that saw us not have that clinical edge that we needed when it mattered most. Kathleen, what formation should this Irish side be playing? based on the personnel? Million dollar question. Uh, I think what we saw in the first half yesterday is probably as close as we will get to a formation that suits the way the team plays. Like, I think that when you have players like Sinead Farley who can hold the ball as well as she does in those central areas, and then also McCabe on the wings. Like there was a couple of balls going from Lucy Quinn over to McCabe on the other side of the pitch, which were just absolutely sublime. Um, I think if we can get a system like that that works, get Caruso like firing a little bit more, um, I think it would be really beneficial to this team in terms of how the personnel that we have and how well we can play. I think bring Mannion into that team as well mm. um, in terms of getting a bit of pace out from the back and a player who can, you know, keep the ball at her feet really, really well, isn't afraid to take on defenders. I think if we had a player like her in this tournament, we probably would have got a result from either of these two games that we've played. And like surely push Megan Connolly up further, yeah? Because... It feels almost like yeah. So like Conley, yeah, yeah. So like if man, a player like Manny came in, that would free mm. Conley to go up into her usual position. Uh, I mean, like she said it herself when we chatted to her Marbella. It's not a role she particularly enjoys playing, but she does it because you know that's what's required of her in the team. Um, so yeah, I would be interested to see if the new manager came in, would they stick to the kind of Vera Powell by the back? Katie Blaine on the wing not being pushed further up the field or would they change it up a little bit? Are there any potential candidates obvious at the moment or is this one of those uh, we hire a, a global recruitment specialist team who go the whole way around the world and then find somebody who's working at Navistown at the moment? Uh, uh, from what I've heard there's not a short list at the moment. Okay. It, like it'll be interesting to see how they approach it in terms of the fact they got Vera Powell in and hit, like on quite a decent wage, and that was just two connections in the FAI. So it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what they do if they do decide to change things up. Uh, what's your final review of Perth as a place? 
Um, it's been <laughs> that's funny because I told out in life. I told out near like Fremantle and stuff is really nice. The weather has been atrocious since we have been here. The city itself is really, really quiet. Um, I talked to a lot of Irish fans yesterday who were all a bit in shock, I think, after going from Sydney to Perth in terms of vibes. Uh, a lot of people saying they were very excited to get out, but also no disrespect to any Perthians who may be listening and I maybe just didn't see the right parts of your city. It's basically like Port Leash. And I'll always have made a go. I quite like Perley, so. <laughs> well, there you go. You wanted to have a go, Kathleen, for confidently uh, knowing more about football than you? Was that what that's what your story was earlier on about the Olympico? What? 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 No. Uh, I was uh, watching the World Cup show uh, with yourself and Joe, and I was like, Joe, I was like, it's an Olympico. What? You knew about this beforehand? I had never right. heard about this at all. Uh, Gav was telling me about it too beforehand. Sorry. Never heard about it. Yeah, I, I think it was actually one of the proudest moments of my career that I knew a sporting term that Joe Malloy did not know. Yeah, I, I thought it was really common knowledge. Like, I didn't think it was this weird sort of thing. Olympicals are relatively common in women's football, so maybe that's why, like, there's been a couple of very good ones over the years in big tournaments. Um, like, I, I think in the Euros last summer, I saw one or two. So maybe that's just where I knew it from. But I'm glad I could educate you all on this one. <laughs> I think it will be... Uh, I mean the arrogance, of the arrogance of the statement with the the coat on and the coffee in the background. Like she's just wearing that very well. Come here, did Katie? I was going to say, like, forget covering my first ever World Cup. Forget any of the rest of it. Getting to see the first ever gold. This this is the highlight. This is the true honor. Forget everything I said last night. <laughs> did McCabe mean to score? No, not at all. Oh, what? not a chance. What? what are you talking? Why is she kicking it in the direction of the goals if she's not trying to score? Well, like, as in, she was trying to get the corner in, but she wasn't trying to score it. And, like, we asked her about it last night, and she kind of sheepishly was like, yeah. Like, she wasn't. Sorry. The consensus down here is that she definitely wasn't from everyone I was talking to. She was like, oh, because of the wind and the rain, she didn't really, she was trying to, like, judge how to get it in. And she, when we asked, she was just like, yeah, of course I was trying to do it, but you can see in her eyes she wasn't serious. Uh, Just trying to get that on the end of someone's those head. Words, those words are good enough for me. Yeah, I think sorry, I, I, I believe we her. We can't say if we end up going to our first Women's World Cup, Kathleen, and we only score one goal, we can't come home saying we didn't mean to score it. Uh, we have to. Uh, <laughs> not <laughs> accidental goal. Not, not to kind of throw out all the ethics of journalism, etc., and print the myth and not the truth, etc., but we can't come home saying we didn't mean to score that goal. <laughs> I mean, I know she meant to score as in she wanted Ireland to score. I'm just not sure if she entirely intended it for herself. But, uh, it's all very uh, you no, know, judgmental. I, I'll, live in the, I'll live in the dream world for a couple more days. I was, uh, yeah, I, I think I blanked out for most of that, to be honest. All of a sudden, the game was started again, and I was like, did we even celebrate that goal? I can't remember. Kathleen, good stuff. Chat to you later. Thanks a million. Bye, guys. Have a good morning. Yep. Kathleen, back to me live from Portleash this morning at a minute past eight. <laughs>